Hello and welcome to this episode of Hampton Roads Business Live. My name is Rory Graham and I'm your host and today we have the pleasure of having with us uh, Patricia Weber. Uh, she is an author, a um, speaker, and a coach, business coach. Uh, nice to have you here. Great to be here, Rory. You do a lot of things and you have a really uh, extensive background. So before we get into talking about the authors and stuff, why don't we talk about your background? Tell people where you come from. Without revealing my age, I have been in sales and sales management. I've been a corporate trainer, an independent corporate trainer, so I got a chance to travel almost everywhere in the U.S. And uh, when I wanted to retire the first time, which was in 2000, but my husband didn't go along with that plan, my last gig was in a country called Mauritius, a uh, little tiny country east of Madagascar, which is east of um, South Africa. And then when I came back in, I decided I wasn't finished working since I wasn't going to be allowed to retire. And I got into coaching and I got my coaching certification through Coachville. And then gradually that led me to becoming more present online with things like LinkedIn and Twitter and, and those social media venues. Mm -hmm. And then from that, I started writing and became an author. Okay, All right, so we're going to talk about that uh, being an author because you don't have what you you have what four books out. I've self-published four books. They're on Kindle, Amazon Kindle, and there's one that I print when I'm out in the community doing public speaking. Can you run through the titles of those? Oh, if I can remember all of them. One was a uh, collaborative. Actually, two were collaborative books. One is your elevator pitch, and I collaborated with a woman I met on LinkedIn. The other one was successful collaborating in business. That was with a woman I met in Canada. And then I wrote The Happy and Fulfilled Introvert. I am one. I can show you how. Mm -hmm. And then my final book that I print when I go out to speak is Taking the Mystery Out of Sales and Networking Follow-Up. Okay. Well, you did pretty good on that test. <laughs> <laughs> I did. <laughs> oh, wow, okay. <laughs> well, those weren't short titles either. Uh, well, tell us, what is the newest book that you're working on now? Yeah, I'm really excited about that one, mainly because of how it came about. And that's called Communication Toolkit for Introverts, Essential Skills for Everyday Business Success or Situations. We haven't agreed on it. That's the working title and the mm -hmm. subtitle we're still Working. And when, when does you expect that to be published? Um, within the next month to two, so oh, okay. pretty, they pretty close. they got to sign on title pretty soon. We do, but mm -hmm. then there's the cover and then there's the marketing on the publisher's end. I've already started on my marketing. Okay. All right, so before we go any further, you're going to use a term introvert yeah. a lot. So tell everybody what does that mean? Yeah, I, I would love to because there's so much misunderstanding about it. And a lot of times I actually have people say to me, oh, you're not an introvert. You just speak so fluently in public and they'll go on with things that they see in me. In reality, the only thing that makes us an introvert or an extrovert or that preference in our personality is that it's how we get our energy and where we prefer to direct our attention to get it. So extroverts are people who get their energy from other people, from events around them, and they have to have a lot of people around them sometimes if they're very highly extroverted, or they have to be at a lot of events. That's why when, as an introvert, we might be out networking in the business field, it's an energy drain. It's not an energy maker for mm -hmm. us. So it's, that's literally the only difference, what it is that gets our energy. And for introverts, I like to say we got our energy from the playground of our mind. We'd much rather be in our mind, thinking, planning, preparing, rehearsing, whatever you want to call it, than actually being in the extroverting part of it where we're actually delivering all of what So that it's does. not a matter of being shy. No, actually you can be an extrovert and be shy. Hmm. One of the very first clients I coached was a shy extrovert. And after we worked together, she went on to be the top performing producer in her network marketing company in that year. Hmm. It was just simply a matter of, she already had all the extroverting skills that she would need to put into place, but she was just shy. She couldn't bring herself to go to a networking 
group or even out at the shopping mall and being in line with someone in a store and start talking with them. That's, that's shyness. It, that held her back. Whereas an introvert, we might not talk to you simply because we don't yet have that connection or that very prepared thing that we want to talk about. Big okay. difference. All right. I'm trying to see where I fit in all that. <laughs> Okay, uh, you and I have talked, and you you you've referred to a communication toolkit. Right. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. Well, we I don't even know how we landed on that title for the book, but the publisher found me through my blog, and they were expanding their department, and they came along, and they had an idea for a book, but I didn't think that could hold my attention for 200 pages. So when I pulled my followers online, we came up with six essential communication skills that they wanted help with. And so I put that back to the publisher and they said, oh, this sounds like a communication toolkit. And I said, it does, doesn't it? Because in a toolkit, you have different tools. You have a screwdriver, a wrench, maybe a level, maybe even somewhere in it, a power tool. So the communication toolkit for introverts is specifically geared toward them to allow them to have those communication skills that probably extroverts take for granted in everyday business situation and just ramp them up. Just important basic skills that they uh, I, I think they're basic, but you know, research shows that those are the skills that move people towards success in business. Mm -hmm. And there's been plenty of people that I've either hoped to coach or actually did get to coach who said, I think it's my presentation skills that are holding me back. Or they might say, I think I'm not good at negotiating. I didn't get this particular thing I wanted at my job. So that's okay. what we're focusing on. Can you tell me what the, what the tools are? Yes, listening, which by, by the way, introverts have a very unfair advantage with that. Attending business meetings and being active in those. Handling conflict management being able to make presentations, and selling influence and persuasion. Those things happen every day to everybody in business, mm -hmm. but we can let them hold us back as an introvert because we tend to believe the myth that we don't have those social skills. Or the, we do. Or the people are born salespeople or something. I hate that myth. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's something I, I learned wasn't true. <laughs> <laughs> no such thing as a born salesperson. No. <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, when working with a publisher, um, what's that been like? Uh, you hear all kinds of stories. Some of them are good, some of them not so good. And you said you were self-published before, but now you're right. working with a publisher. So what's the... Yeah, that's a big jump to go from is. where you're controlling the whole process, not just the writing, but the editing, sending the editing out to whoever you want to edit it. But the publisher actually, even though, and I was really blessed for them coming to me. Most people go to a publisher or a hundred some publishers right. to get their proposal accepted. And I was really lucky. They came to me. I didn't like their proposal. I gave them a counter proposal. From that, I had to create about a 30 page outline of what would be in the book chapter by chapter, subject by subject, what would be the purpose, and then they approved that. Then we got into their timeline once that was approved. And as long as I agreed to those two things, we moved on to the agreement of the advance, which was the one thing I wished I didn't do on my own, because I probably could have gotten more, but you live and you learn. Most people don't get an advance either. And then you have to pretty much stick to the timeline. So for me, what I've done throughout the last eight months, which is how long I've been writing the book, and it's in the final editing process, I would set hours every day when I was going to write, when I knew I was best at writing, to get that really in the flow of it. So you write better in the morning or at night? Well, that, that's interesting too, Rory, because sometimes it would depend on what happened the day before. Mm -hmm. But I would try for the morning, but if it wouldn't flow, I wouldn't force it. I would simply say, okay, take a break, do something else. You've got plenty of other things going on and move on to it in the afternoon. When you, when you write, do you think about it for a, a while and then it just flows when you write it? Or is it a struggle somewhat? Or is it piece by piece? Or Well, most of the time it's pretty 
pretty much of a flow because what I chose to do in this book is not only use my personal anecdotes from all those years in business sales and sales management, but I interviewed over a dozen, pretty close to two dozen introvert experts in their own field. And so I had all these ideas. So one, the way I started it, a chapter, which could take a week or two, is I'd look at the chapter, I'd see what the section is that I was going to be writing on that day or those couple of hours. I'd think about who I had interviewed, what I wanted to say. I'd get the juices going, as mm -hmm. you, you might be referring to. And then I'd start writing. And pretty much it would flow until with an editor, what happens when you turn your chapter in, you've, you've got to let go of your ego. I mean, the very first mm -hmm. time I got the chapter back wasn't too bad with the edits. Second chapter, third, but the fourth chapter when we started to get into the real nitty gritty of building confidence, how does an introvert build their self-confidence, they started tearing things apart. I think I said to my husband, I don't think I can finish this <laughs> book. And then you know what? I, I thought about it. They're going to make me a better writer, and mm -hmm. that's going to make for a better book. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened. And now I don't care. They, te they have torn from four to ten. They've torn every chapter apart mm -hmm. for like 50 percent is what mm -hmm. I have to rewrite because they mm -hmm. want me to make it clearer, sharper, more specific, and honed in for the reader to understand. And the reader is typically going to be an introvert, but it could be an extrovert who, who manages introverts or works side by side with them. Yeah, it's a shame you're not more passionate about what you're doing. <laughs> okay. I'll try to ramp that up. I'll try to ramp it up. <laughs> okay. So, I'll, so the next question is, what are some of your passions outside of business? I do have them. Do so you know, I do. Okay. All well, right, because you're sure passionate about inside the business. So. My very first passion is my family, my husband, my son, our daughter-in-law and grandchildren. They live on the West Coast. That makes it interesting because we don't see them often, but when we do, I'm totally focused on, in particular, those grand girls because they're just, you know, they're just such, they're an open book mm -hmm. in every way to be written or to be talking to you about their book. And then also I'm passionate about cars. My, you know, my husband's the extrovert, so he, Wherever he goes, I will follow unless it's something I'm totally not interested in. I'll go and walk away if necessary. But when we left the boating hobby behind for cars, supposedly better investment than boats, we got into something really fantastic. And I just love cars. We started out with a classic car, 1933 Packard, restored it from the ground up. My husband likes to say we wrote the checks for it. We didn't actually do the work. Then we went on to... Uh, a Ferrari, exotic cars, which we only have one, so don't think that we're like Jay Leno or anybody else. And then we decided, one last car, let's go back to, well, I won't tell you how far back we went, but we went back to the days of uh, Chevys when they were muscle cars, and mm -hmm. we have one of those as well. Okay. So we love cars. All right. Well, all right. well that's, that's uh, certainly a, a, a varying interest. Now, let's talk about, before we get into from the last question. Let's talk about your, your um, speaking. What type mm -hmm. of groups do you speak to? Uh, can you name a few groups you've spoken to recently? Because I know sure. you do speaking to small businesses. Yes. For small business. Yeah, that, that's my focus is small businesses and associations. But I've spoken to the, the groups that the Chesapeake Development Council brings in, Economic Development Council brings in, things about networking or sales. I've spoken with the Williamsburg job transitions group. I've spoken... This isn't just for introverts. No. This is for I, when I general. speak, I speak in general. What's interesting though, sometimes they'll, they'll want to pair me up because they know what my expertise is, interest, introverts, and they'll pair me up with an extrovert on the same topic. And it's very interesting then because we, we do come at things very differently, which is good for the people who are listening because one size doesn't fit all. There's mm -hmm. not just one answer. Okay. All right. Well, and, and you do that all over Hampton Roads? Or, yeah. Or yeah. I have, I have not traveled in a while. I am going to get back into it because as an author now with this book, I think people will be ready to listen to it as far as at their kickoff meetings, which I used to do as a corporate trainer. I used to do kickoff meeting training. But primarily the speaking is more... It's not really talking head because I do get people engaged. I get people to raise their hand or talk with the person next to them. 
but it's more of a broad brush, not going down so deep like I like to, which will be for me something mm -hmm. new. Okay. All right. And uh, my last question was, how do you relax? <laughs> you sound like you need to. <laughs> You're awful yeah. busy. <laughs> you know, I don't I know. I can't I imagine you relax. <laughs> <laughs> I, I try to relax. I have to say probably the best way I relax really is meditation. That, that's the, you meditate, I, really? <laughs> I do. I do. I do it every nah, morning. I want to see a video it, on that. <laughs> I, <laughs> I do. I do it faithfully every morning. Really? I think if I didn't do it, then you would definitely see not a relaxed Patricia Weber. You would yeah. see really the wound up one. Well, I thought I was having trouble imagining you as an introvert <laughs> and now <laughs> meditation is really really hard to match and, and i know and i have to say this though i also exercise now that's not every day i exercise about five times a week that is relaxing to me because it's the energy thing i if i have a lot of energy inside that i haven't been able to get out then you know a little kickboxing routine makes you relax afterwards okay <laughs> Or drive a Ferrari. Or drive a Ferrari. <laughs> Just go sit in it. Smell it. Listen to it. <laughs> okay. All right, is there anything we haven't talked about that you wanted to touch on? I would like to ask people if they think they're interested at all in being the first to know about the book to go to my website, patricia-weber.com, and just sign up for my newsletter, and you will be the first to know about the book. Okay. All right, and is this just for introverts or everybody? No, it, it's mainly focused for introverts to be able to become motivated. Well, they're probably going to be motivated when they read it to be able to go ahead and put things into action. But I think it will be beneficial to even extroverts who have to work with those people, sit side by side with them, possibly in a you know sales bullpen or something, or who manage them because, or who are a manager, an mm -hmm. introvert manager. Right. Okay. All right. Well, if you're in small business and in any of those categories and you could uh, use some help um, with uh, uh, your sales team or for, with yourself, uh, you can contact Patricia at the uh, information that's at the end of this video and it's also on the bottom of this page. Uh, and uh, if you'd like to know when her book is coming out, um, a little more advance notice on that, uh, you can uh, check her website and uh, you can email her there. Uh, I appreciate you coming in. Thank you very Thank you, much uh, for uh, coming in, and it's been very interesting. I had have, have uh, not talked to anybody about that <laughs> introverts before, so <laughs> so, and I still want that picture of meditation. <laughs> All right, <laughs> thanks for coming in. Thanks, sir.